Hey Math Warners! In this lesson you will learn how to find slope by using the slope formula. In the previous lesson, slope was described as the constant rate of change of a line. You saw how to find the slope of a line by using its graph. There is also a formula you can use to find the slope of a line, which is usually represented by the letter M. To use this formula, you need the coordinates of two different points on the line. So the slope formula can be described in three forms, the words, formula, or example. So here, uh, the slope is defined as a line. The slope of a line is the ratio of the difference in y values to the difference in x values. Uh, we also describe that as the, the change in rise over the change in run uh, between two different points on the line. If x1, y1, and x2, y2 are any two different points on a line, then the slope of a line is uh, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x, x sub 1. This is essentially the difference in your y's over the difference in your x's. The rise over the run. So if these two points were examples, we would simply plug in the appropriate points, my x values. We did y sub 2 I'm sorry, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 in the numerator, and then a difference in our x's in the denominator, y sub x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So we're going to find the slope of a line that contains the points 2, 5, and 8, 1. I'm going to use the slope formula, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now, I'm going to identify, um, let's say, the first point here. This is going to be point 1. It really doesn't matter which one is point 1 or point 2 as long as you're consistent. So if I make this point 1, that makes 2x1 and y and then 5y1. And 8 is x2 and 1 is y2. So once I've identified, it, identified the coordinates uh, appropriately, then I can just sub them into the formula. Again, slope is the difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. So we did 1 minus 5 over 8 minus 2. This line has a slope of negative 4 sixth. Ideally, we'd like to simplify as much as possible, so this can be simplified to negative 2 thirds. The slope of the line that contains 2, 5, and 8, 1 is negative 2 thirds. Another example, let's use our slope formula again. Once again, I'm going to let the, uh, the first order pair be point 1, which means that negative 2 is x1, negative 2 is y1, 7 is x2, and negative 2 is y2. Then I'm going to plug them into the formula, difference of our y's over the difference of our x's. Obviously there's a lot of potentially careless errors that can be made here, uh, so it's important that we're not only setting up correctly, but carrying out the computation correctly. In this case, we get 0 over 9, so the slope of this line is going to be 0, which means it's a horizontal line. All right, you guys try this one. Uh, find the slope of the line that contains 5, negative 7, and 6, negative 4. Pause the video now. All right, welcome back. So, using the slope formula, uh, you may have identified differently, but as we've been doing it, the first order pair we identified as point 0.1, and the second one ordered order pair was point 0.2. Consequently, that gave me negative 4 minus negative 7 over 6 minus 5. Minus five difference of y's over our difference of x's. In which case I get a, a simplified slope of 3. So the slope of the line that contains the two points is 3. Sometimes you're not, going to, uh, you're not given two points to use in the formula, so you might have to choose two points from a graph or for ta from a table. For instance, if I gave you this uh, this graph and you had to find the slope and we wanted to use uh, the slope formula I can pick two points out, two definitive points so I'm going to probably pick out this 
y-intercept here, 0, 2, and then it looks like the, the line clearly goes through these intersecting lines here at negative 2, negative 2. So I'm going to plug those into the formula, subbing 0, 2 for x1 and x, uh, y1, and negative 2, negative 2 for x2 and y2. Difference of y's over our difference of x's gives us a slope of 2. I can confirm that. It might be actually more efficient. Um, I can confirm that. If, if the slope is 2, that means we're going up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And that would certainly be confirmed with our rise over run method. Now from a table, we could pick any of these two ordered pairs to, uh, to be our, our point 0.1 and point 0.2 in the slope formula. I'm going to choose negative 2 and 5 and 0 and 1. Plug them into our formula, change of y's over change of x's. So this is going to give me a slope of negative 2. Now if this is truly, if this is a line, then it doesn't matter which two ordered pairs we, we select, they're all going to have the same slope uh, uh, relative to one another. One more time with a graph. Uh, we've got two given points. I'm going to use the uh, the y-intercept again, and I'm going to use that other point, negative two, positive four, to sub in for point uh, point one. Simplify, we get a slope of negative three. All right, you guys try this one. The graph below shows a linear relationship. Find the slope. Use the slope formula. Pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. So the two points are given clearly, so you could use those. You could even use this uh, y-intercept of 0, 2. It looks pretty, pretty obvious there, too. So given the two points given, we're going to plug those into the slope-intercept form, identifying the first point as point 1 and the second point as point 2. Remember, even if you reversed it, it would still give the same answer, just as long as you're consistent. So if we simplify this, that would give us a slope of 1 half. Oops. How'd you do? Okay, now you guys try this one using the table uh, and the slope formula. Find the slope. Now, once again, you could choose any two points along this table, being that it's uh, they're all part of a linear relationship. Uh, I chose 0, 0. Gotta love those easy computations and negative 2, 3 for my second point. If I use the slope formula, I'm going to plug in my values for y2 and y1, the difference of y's over the difference of x's gives me a slope of negative 3 halves. Now notice that this initially came out as 3 over negative 2. Negative 3 over, I'm sorry, 3 over negative 2 is the same thing as negative 3 halves. You can pull that negative sign out in front of the fraction. So remember the slope is a rate of change. So in real world problems, finding the slope can give you information about how a quantity is changing. For instance, in this graph, the graph shows that the average electricity costs in dollars for operating a refrigerator for several months. We're going to find the slope of the line, then tell what the slope represents. So it appears that we're relating time and the cost of electricity. So in general, uh, it looks like as time increases, the cost of electricity is increasing as well, which makes sense. And so we're going to find the slope using the two points given in our slope formula. And this tells us that we have a slope of 6. Now more specifically, what that means is that it's increasing, uh, the electri refrigerator electricity cost is increasing um, $6.00 per month. Six dollars per month because this is a slope of six over one. So we go up six over one, six dollars per month. Up six over one, six dollars per month. So that might uh, require us to reflect upon why the cost of the refrigerator, co uh, refrigerator is increasing um, so quickly and so rapidly and consistently. So in this situa situation, y represents the cost of electricity and x represents the time. So slope represents change in cost compared to change in time in units of cost in dollars and months. So a slope of 6 simply means that the cost of running the refrigerator is at as a rate 
of six dollars per month. The graph shows the height of a plant over a period of days. Find the slope of the line, then tell what the slope represents. All right, guys, this is on you. Pause your video now. Okay, welcome back. So you got the two points given, and we're gonna use the slope formula. Hopefully you plugged them into the formula appropriately. This gave us a slope of one half. Now in the context of the, the situation, Y represents the height of the plant and X represents the time. So slope represents change in height over change in time in units of centimeters and days. So a slope of one half means the plant grows at a rate of one centimeter every two days. If you know the equation that describes a line, you can find a slope by using any two ordered pair solutions. It is often easiest to use the ordered pairs that contain the intercepts. So what this is saying is that if I give you a line, 4x minus 2y equals 16, we just need two points from this line. We can simply use the intercepts, which we learned last lesson. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to find the, the y-intercept, or the x-intercept here by letting y equal 0. Likewise, I'm going to find the y-intercept here by letting x, x equal 0. And then given these two points, the intercepts, x is 4 and y is negative 8, I can use those as ordered pairs and plug them into the slope formula. So the line contains 4, 0, and 0, negative 8. And we find, once we use the formula, a slope of 2. Okay, you guys try. Use the slope formula and the intercept method to find the slope of 2x plus 3y equals 12. Pause your video now. Okay, welcome back. So we first find the x-intercept by letting y equal 0. So x is 6. We find the y-intercept by letting x equal 0. We find that y is 4. So given those two order pairs, 6, 4, and 0, I'm sorry, 6, 0, and 0, 4, we can plug them into the slope intercept, I'm sorry, slope formula, and that gives us a slope of negative 2 thirds. So in this lesson, you learn how to find slope using the slope.